welcome to your workout. I am Coach Christina. We are gonna get warmed up here, starting with 10 one-arm cleans, right, left, and um, I have been called out by one of my fellow coaches. Um, I am not, and, and they were 100% correct, I'm not keeping my elbow connected to my body on my warm-up clean, and I'll tell you why, it's because my mind is not connected to my body. So today, I'm really gonna focus on that, all right? I was making excuses and everything, but it's all good. It's all good. We're going to do that nice, relaxed hook grip. We're going to come back into the swing and then clean it up. Keeping that elbow nice and tight to the body. See, there I got it. Put a towel under there. That towel should not fall out, okay? You're going to do 10 on the right, 10 on the left, dropping into the hook, sliding into the corner. Other side. So it is important to stay present, stay in the moment. I'm always thinking about what's coming next, what I'm gonna be saying next, what I'm gonna be doing next. But I too need to be dialed in, working on those pointers I'm giving you. Good, then we've got squat jacks, or just regular jumping jacks. You go out to the side, or here, 16. Stay lower. And we've got dynamic squat stretches. So nice and tall, slight bend in the knee. I'm gonna reach down, touch those toes. Bring the hips down, arms out, hips together. Stand it up. Okay, you can spread those legs out a little bit. If you need to for your squat to turn those toes out just a titch, that's fine. If you need to widen your stance just a titch, that's fine. Everybody's body is built a little differently, so the cues that work for some are not going to work for all. We're doing six of these. And then. We're gonna move into 12 alternating lateral squats. So get a wider stance here, open it up, sink down to the right, down to the left. You can even stay a little lower if you want to, or you can stand all the way up in between, that's up to you. You can also stay on one side, that makes more sense for you. It's fine. Just get 12 in, six each. We've got six toe touch hinges, so nice, tall spine. Feel like you've got a string on your head, it's pulling you up. Hands are gonna come out front. Slight bend in that right knee. Left leg comes up as you come down, hinging. Six times. And you just come as far as you need to. Your hamstring will let you know. Switch sides. Then we've got hands to your delts, we're going to do shoulder circles. So do about six forward. And six reverse. Then come on down to the ground for quadruped extension rotations. So you're on all fours, toes are tucked under, fingertip to ear, elbow to elbow. Open up and look past that elbow. Six on the right, six on the left. You prefer to sit back into those hips. That feels better to you, that's fine. And the other side. All it needed was a little spark. Give me my heart back, somebody stole it and put it in your Good, then bring it on over to your back side. We're gonna do tabletop bridges. So feet are flat on the floor, hands are either facing your heels, or you can come out to the side. Find your distance here, you're gonna thrust the hips up. Squeeze your glutes, look the ceiling, bring it back down six times. Really squeeze your glutes. Wake them up. Good, and then just a little ankle mobility. So instead of 
nice and tall planter flexion and then dorsiflexion. So bring them in towards your body. Planter, hold it for three. Dorsi, hold it for three. Do that six times. This is number three. You know, sometimes these mobility things seem kind of boring, but they're very important. You don't use it, you're going to lose it. All right, very nice. Hopefully you are nice and warmed up here. We're going to get started today. So this workout is not... <laughs> I kind of looked at it earlier and I'm like, who wrote this? So it's... it's not my usual. I'm usually a little bit more of a, you know, I like my cardio pops and that kind of thing. This is pretty strengthy today. So we're going to roll with that. I, I, I like strength. It's important, right? Got to put muscle on. The more muscle we have, the more functional we are, the more fat we burn. Generally healthier, happier human beings, okay? So today we're going to start, though, with a little pentathlon practice. We are going to do our pentathlon next Monday. So if you are participating, um, you know, the next couple of days should take it a little bit easier. If you're not going to be joining us, you don't need to worry about that quite so much. All right? So, today we're working on the push press. We are going to be doing the light, medium, heavy, um, building up those weights, and then we're going to drop back to light. However, instead of changing the intervals this time, we're going to do 30 seconds on each weight, which means that light will be a little bit easier, but that heavy is going to be a little bit longer. So, pace yourself. Really use your extremities and you will be good to go. I just realized that I don't have the right weights that I need though. So take it up here. Ugh. All right, so just a quick reminder on your push press. It is done with the feet staying flat on the floor, okay? So you're gonna rack up your bell and you're gonna do that little knee dip just to get the knees knocked out, like somebody's coming behind you and kicking them out. The upper arm needs to be in contact with your torso, okay? That knee dip loads the bell on your chest a little bit more, so that you can use your quads to help power it up, okay? At the top, the elbow's right next to the ear, palm is facing forward, bell handles dangle through that palm, and your fingers are nice and relaxed, okay? Stick fingers is what I like to call them, but when your hand is extended like this, you are fatiguing your forearm. You want to try to keep it nice and relaxed so that forearm can chill, okay? It's better for your grip. All right, so just a quick little reminder here. Push press, okay? Elbow right above the hip bone, hand right above the breastbone. Upper arm attached to the body. I'm going to do that little knee dip. Now notice the knee dip does not arch my back, okay? It basically just gets those knees out there. My hips are still over my ankles, okay? I'm going to use those legs, push it up, bring it back down. Push it up, bring it back down. As those weights get heavier, it's important to let your body absorb that so you can do that little knee dip when the bell comes back down as well. Okay? All right. So, throw that away. I'm gonna set my clock. Turn my music up a little bit here. Remember, we're starting with a light weight. Right, left. 10 second countdown here. Three, two, one. Okay, use those little knee dips. The pause at the top. Bring it back down. One, you got 10 seconds. And I apologize to anybody who I screwed up this summer and had you coming up on your heels. My bad, we're fixing it though. Three, two, one, I'm right there with you. Keep those soles of the shoes glued to the ground. Those legs are just starting the momentum and then your arm's finishing it. Rep count is 
whatever it is, you're just working here, all right? Three, two, one, moving to medium weight. I still don't have to do all the mental math here. That doesn't work out very well for me. Here we go, medium. Three, two, one. Just that little dip. Your legs are maybe hip width apart, maybe a little bit wider. Wherever you feel strongest. You don't want to have them too far apart though, because then you're losing the power of your base. Think of yourself like you're stacked. Right? Ankles, knees, hips, arms, shoulders. Three, two, one. Stack it up. Keep everything lined up. You're the most powerful when you're lined up. All right, left side, medium weight. Three, two, one. Focusing on form. You don't have to go super fast. It's practice. Practice makes perfect. You want to make sure the reps are all the way you want them to be. What's your core doing? Dial that belly button into the spine. Support that weight overhead, especially as that bell gets heavier. Three, two, one. Heavy. All right, and then we get a little break after the right left on the heavy. Three, two, one. Receive that bell as it comes back down. Don't just jar it into your body, especially as it gets heavier. Let those legs help absorb some of that pressure. You don't want your low back taking it all. Three, two, one. All right, here we go, other side. Three, two, one. I did it, I took my heels off, pay attention. It's hard, when that bell gets heavier, you wanna use more momentum. Feet stay glued to the floor. You can rest in rack, and you can rest in lockout. Think of going straight up with that elbow. Three, two, one. Put it down. You get a whole cycle of rest here. So 10 seconds, 30 seconds, and 10 more seconds. So 50 total. Almost a minute, and then we're gonna do light one more time. The reason why we do these pendulum sets is because, not a total pendulum set, but going up to heavy and then coming back down again, is that in order to move that heavier valve, you require a lot more muscle recruitment, and your mu mu muscles can remember what they're doing. When we go back to that lighter weight, your muscles are still thinking they need to pull all that power so it makes our light feel super light, all right? All right, light, one more time. Right, left, here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> Does it feel so light? It's crazy. It's like nothing. It makes your, uh, my light blue feels like a pink or less here. As you use those muscles to move that heavier weight, Keep your form though, don't get sloppy. Three, two, one. One more time. <laughs> All right, other side. Three, two, one. That elbow goes straight up and drops right back down into that wrap position. Tight to the body. Going straight up using that alignment. Stay alive. Almost there. Three, two, one. Bells down. Nice job. All right. Woo. How do those arms feel? Nice little work you do there. 
Okay, today we've got back attack and glute reboot circuits. You guys will be able to figure out what muscle groups I'm focusing on today, because you're smart cookies. We've got two circuits. I'm gonna show you them both right now. And then we'll do the first circuit, three rounds through, 35 seconds of work, 10 second transition. And then we'll do the second circuit, okay? I'll give you like a minute in between. So the first circuit, we've got lateral pullovers, close grip push-ups, and a racked pendulum lunge. 35 on the right, 10 second rest, 35 on the left. So just three exercises to show you here, so it should go pretty quick. Your pullovers. Very, very important that you set these up properly. So, when you go to do the pullover, your feet are flat on the floor, all right? And you're gonna reach overhead and grab the handle of the bell. Um, I'm trying to think, it's goblets, you know, like you're gonna drink from it. It is that goblet style, okay? So you insert your thumbs into your palms are facing the top of the handle, okay? Now, your long extended arms here, you don't want any bend in them or as little as possible. But you'll find that when you get yourself into this position, if you don't do anything with your core, your low back is going to be off of the floor. That's because you have an anterior pelvic tilt going on. So we need to make it posterior. We need to fire up that core so that when we go to pull over our heads, we're activating the right muscles, okay? We're gonna use the lats. So when you're in this position, think belly button to spine, push that low back into the floor. Now there's no light under there. There's no air under there. You can hit my tummy, you could punch me in the gut, I'd be all right, okay? That's how engaged your core should be. I'm pushing down through my heels as well. I take a big deep breath, brace the core, pull over, okay? Back down. My pull over, I'm just coming about to my belly button with that handle, you do not need to bring it all the way down to your thighs, okay? Nice, strong pull over, okay? Then you're gonna flip it over for close grip push-ups. Now, close grip, uh, ultimate close grip would be diamond. Those are really hard, but they will really hit your triceps. So if you wanna really hit your triceps, go here. If you're working towards that, go close. Okay, so pretty close together, right under those shoulders. I don't want you to be out here, okay? So close grip, keep them close together. Sometimes it helps to bring the feet a little wider here to give a better base. You're gonna tighten the core, tighten your glutes, drop it down, push it up, okay? I'm pretty close here. It's hard. If I need to make it a little easier, bring them apart a little bit, but I really wanna think about keeping my elbows in nice and tight to my body so I'm really targeting my tries. If doing a full push-up like that is just a little beyond your reach right now, you got a couple of options. Number one, is to do a negative close grip. So you keep those hands close together, keep the elbows nice and tight to the side, keep that core tight. One, two, three, four, and then use your knees to come back up. One, two, three, four. Okay, so you're building strength in that position. The other option is to put your hands up higher on a, if you've got a table or a bench or something, elevate. Still keep the hands close together, okay? Then, racked pendulum lunge. I want you racked on the side <laughs> that is not lunging, okay? The stationary leg is where the rack should be. And the reason why is because I want to put that extra weight on the stationary leg so that that glute on that side has to work just a wee bit hard, okay? If that really messes with your balance and you do not like it, it's okay. You can take it to the other side or you can always go goblet, okay? Or no weight at all if you're a beginner. On your pendulum lunge, chest is up nice and tall. You're gonna step out to 90, keeping that knee um, as close to that ankle as you can. You come out a little bit because that feels better for you, that's fine. And then you're gonna go right back and do a rear. So keeping the feet hip distance apart, front lunge, rear lunge. If the pendulum portion, like I said, going forward is bothering your knees, you can just do a racked reverse lunge. Okay, so you got lots of options. But we're gonna stay on the right side for 35 and then hit the left side for 35. And that is circuit one. Circuit two is going to be an alternating floor row. So for that, you got one bell and I'll give you two options on how you wanna stand for this because everybody's 
built different and some backs and cores like it one way and some like another way. So feet are on either side of the bell, sit back into the hips. Nice straight line from the top of the head to the tailbone. Okay, if you feel like you can successfully set your core here and do your row from this position, okay, you're switching arms, that arm comes right next to the body, pull it up, that's cool. Some people feel better doing it more of a bent over, more bent over fashion. So you're bent over, you're into that hip hinge a little bit, back is nice and straight, same thing, okay? Pulling it up. It doesn't matter which one you do, you do which one feels best for you. If neither one of them feels good for your back, you can always go to a bent over row, and I'd say just do the right on the first round, left on the second round, and then switch it up halfway in the third round, okay? Uh, then, you've got a halo with extension, so I'm gonna make you think on this one. So your halo is goblet style. You're gonna hang that into that bell. It's gonna be right underneath your chin. You're gonna come around to your ear, and then normally you'd come all the way around and come back, okay? What I want you to do is come around, get that bell behind your head, tricep extension here, bring it back down and around. Now, we don't often do the tricep extension holding it this way, so if that really isn't working for you, just go ahead and do the halo, that's fine, okay? If you wanna maybe try a lighter weight to see if you can hold it that way and do the tricep extension, that's fine, okay? Then our final exercise is a B stance glute bridge. So we're gonna do right left on this one too, just like we did the pendulum lunge. So the same setup as we did for the lat pullover, that low back is pressed into the mat. Hands are out to the side at 45 degrees here at the elbow. So you've got that nice strong support for your back. Okay, B stance just means that one foot, so I'm gonna say my left foot, the sole of the foot stays flat on the floor. My right foot, is gonna go on the heel lined up with the toe. Okay, so I've just got the heel of that right foot down. So my left glute is gonna be doing the work here. I'm gonna bring that posterior pelvic tilt. I'm gonna fire it up. Think of uh, hip bone to rib cage, scoop out that belly, drive that belly button down to the floor, and then you're gonna power up through that left foot, really focusing on the left glute, okay? Because you're doing the B stance, all right? not a big movement, don't be jerky, don't be spastic, really put your mind into that glute and squeeze, okay? All right, just gotta set the clock here quick. A little bit longer sets here, we're gonna go 35 seconds of work, 10 second transition. Starting with the lap pullover, 10 second countdown. Get all on the ground, set yourself up. Here we go, three, two, one. Get that low back pressed into the floor. Arms are straight, pull it over. Every time you go to pull, engage your core. Brace it, lock it in. Feel your lats working those big muscles on your back. Shouldn't be feeling it too much in your triceps. You are really make sure you're dialing that core in. Three, two, one. Flip it over for close grip push-ups. In three, two, one. No, they don't pick us up, instead they knock us down And that's the way it goes, until we're in the ground I don't wanna do this anymore No, I just wanna say hello and Do them for as long as you can keep that form good And then if you have to switch, switch To the negative, three, two, one Whew. All right, pendulum lunge Remember, I want that weight on the stationary leg. So my right leg's lunging, the bell's on my left. Three, two, one. Sorry, my mic is in the way. Hold on. Okay, 
Anyways, keep going. Heavy for that kid. And that is safe to say. No, they don't pick us up. Instead, they knock us down. And that's the way it goes. Stay with it. Three, two, one. Set that ball down for a second. We'll go to the other side. Three, two, one. The goal is to swing from the front to the back, but if you need to pause here in the middle, that's okay. All right, that'd be a little modification. Your core is working really hard to stabilize that offset valve. Almost there. The three. Two, one, that's the way it goes until we're back in that pull over. Three, two, one, low back is pressed into the mat. Brace the core and pull. Breathe as you pull the bell overhead. Let that breath help tighten your core. Come on, you got this. Three, two, one. Whew, tricep push up. Close grip. Um, I did also want to throw out there. Three, two, one. If you want to do these on a bell, the bell handles nice and close together. It's another way to activate the triceps. Might be a little bit more attainable than the diamond. You have to be very careful on that when you're on the bells to make sure you're not letting your core drop or your butt come up in the air. Three, two, one. Pendulum lunge. Three, two, one. The bell is screwing you up. You put it on the other side. We're gonna put it down. Okay. Three, two, one. It's asking a lot of your balance to have it on the stationary leg. So you do your other side. Three, two, one. And it's okay to do no weight at all. Go a little lighter on the weight. Almost there. Three, two, one. Oh boy. One more time through. We got this. Let me get three new exercises. Three, two, one. Pull over. Dial it in. Don't go home. Be here. Be present in your body. Feel it working. Activate that core every time. You can hear me do it with my voice, right? Three, two, one. One, last time on the close grips. Come on, you got this. Three, two, one. Do as many as you can. Bring them up onto your bells if you need to. Okay, you figure out what works.
works for you. Do the negative. Make it strong, you can do it. One more. Three, two, one. Nice job, pendulum lunge. Last time. Three, two, one. Come on, this is it, 30 seconds. This is definitely the harder set, come on, you got it. We're almost done with it. Put it down. Other side. Here we go. Three, two, one. Don't have to go fast. Nice and steady. Dial in that balance. This is very advanced. You can take it down by dropping the weight or pausing in the middle. Putting the weight on the other side, holding it goblet, you've got choices. Let's make it work. Stay with me. Come on, three, two, one, done. Whew. That was harder than it looked. Take a minute, walk around, do a drink. Your next three exercises. Alternating floor row, halo with an extension, and B stance glute bridge, right and then left. This is all you have to do today, I promise. There's no hidden finisher today. I check three times. Moving those major muscles, those pendulum lunges. Your glutes are working, your quads are working, your hammies are working. So when you activate the muscles, those big ones, it requires more oxygen so you can get the cardio effects in that, right? That heart's gotta, gotta pump a little faster to get them fired up. All right, second circuit. Back attack, glute reboot. Recommit to the second half of your workout. You have got some gas left in the tank. You are ready to go with an alternating floor row in three, two, one. Again, that core is rock solid. Okay, the elbow tracks right next to the body. Neck is neutral, chin is relaxed. I'm looking about two feet in front of me. One rep at a time. You need to place a hand on the other leg to help stabilize your back. That's fine. Try the other position as well if this bothers you. Almost there. Three, two, one. Nice. Halo with extension. Again, you might need to go one lighter than you normally do on your halo. Three, two, one. Feet are together. Come behind. Full extension. Bring it back. Finish the halo. Reverse. Extend. Back. All the way around. Make sure that that bell is all the way behind your head. This is going to help you with that. You don't have any choice. You can't extend if you're here. Okay, you got to be all the way down for that extension. Core is tight. Dial it in. If you are struggling, drop the extension. The elbow stay right next to the ear. Three, two, one. Down to the ground. For the glute bridge. Feet start. Both flat. Right heel comes out to the left toes, but your feet stay hip width apart. Push up. Keep that posterior pelvic tilt. Really focus on the left glute. 
that right one's just a balance point. Keep it tucked. Belly button to spine. Hips to rib cage. Come on. Put your mind in that muscle that's working. That left move. Fire it up. Three, two, one. Get ready for the other side. Again, feet start. Equal distance. Right heel comes out to the tip of that right toe, but keep them separated. Three, two, one. Try to keep that posture and probably tilt. If you're not feeling your glute, you probably lost the tilt. Focus it in. Not a big movement. Your glutes are arguably the most important muscle in your body. They connect the lower half to the upper half. Strong glutes mean a strong back. Every exercise is better if your glutes are active. Fire in three, two, one. So we gotta wake them up, guys. A lot of people walking on a dead butt because we sit too much. Wake them up. Alternating row. Three, two, one, go. Come on, I told you this one was easier. You are fine. Stay with me. Core is tight, belly button is fine. Like a broken freaking record, but it's important. Stay with it. Do not going this in. Injury happens when you're not paying attention. Come on, stay with it. Almost there. Three, two, one, nice. Extension, halo. Like what's next? I'm gonna show you from the side this time. Three, two, one. Core is super tight. Elbows stay right next to the ear. Bring it around. Nice, slow and controlled. We are not rushing through this. Mixing the mobility aspect of the halo with the strength of an extension. You're almost there. Three, two, one. Take it down. Beast stance glute bridge. Set it up. Three, two, one. Belly button to spine. Hip bone to rib cage. Push up to your whole left foot. Squeeze the glutes. Dial it in, turn it on. Come on. Three, two, one. Nice, other side. So start with the feet equidistant apart. Walk that left heel out a little bit. Here we go, three, two, one. Low back is pressed into the floor before you start to lift. Keep that tilt, it is tough. Stay focused. Try not to let the space creep in under your back. Where are you feeling it? Almost there. We got one more time through and then you are done. Three, two, one. Up, rows, last time. Three, two, one. Belly button is fine. Straight line from the top of the head to the tailbone. Core is engaged. Get in the zone, you got this. Your body knows what it's doing. It's all warmed up. Enjoy the process. This is not punishment, it's privilege. Three, two, one. You've got time to be here and do this with me. You are lucky. Tricep extension. Three, 
two, one. Not to say that you didn't make this time, right? It's important to you so you make it happen. We're almost home. One more time. Three, two, one. Blue bridge. Just a kickstand on that right side. Three, two, one. Start with your low back. Rest into the mat. Think about keeping that position as you use your glute to pick your butt up. Put the mind into the glute. Push through that foot on the left side. Left glute is working. That right leg is just hanging. Come on, dial it in. Almost there. Press on the mat. Posterior pelvic tilt. Three, two, one, go. It's a small movement. Notice my hips do not scoot over my knees. I'm not trying to do an extension here. I am activating my glutes. Control. It's not a violent motion. You got it. No, I sound like Jane Fonda. I'm sorry, but make it meaningful. Three, two, one. You know, a meaningful blue bridge. You guys know what I mean. Come on. <laughs> Just mean don't rush it. Feel the whole exercise. Feel your whole glute contracting. You know it sounds cool. Just bear with me, all right? All right, you guys are done. Woo. That wasn't too bad. So take a couple of breaths here, slow it down, and I do want you to take just a moment to be in your body right now. Oops, I screwed that up. How are you feeling? How do your muscles feel right now? Are you feeling one in particular? Do they feel turned on? Are they fatigued? Where are you at? Hold on, let me see. Okay. Actually, I feel really good. I don't feel fatigued. I feel like I worked it, but didn't overwork it, okay? Maybe my shoulders feel okay after those push presses. Overall, thumbs up, good stuff. All right, nice deep breath in. Bring those arms up overhead, exhale down. Again, big deep breath in, exhale down. So not every workout has to make you feel like you have been mopped across the gym floor, <laughs> okay? Sometimes it's nice to feel that way. You're leaning to the right, pulling that left arm. Go ahead and switch sides. Some days, yes, that's cool, do that, right? Some days though, it's okay to just feel like you worked your muscles in a very productive, safe way, right? You had your mind engaged, everything was good. Bring those arms down. Crisscross. Learn to embrace all the different kinds of workouts that we do. You can have your favorite. Gosh knows we all do, right? But embrace the other ones too. They all have a purpose. There is a method to our madness. Switch arms. Another five. Trying to get you well-rounded. Cardio, strength, core, not overworking anything. Go ahead and release. I'm gonna have you come on down to the ground. Oh, I lost my fuzzy. I don't even know when that happened. All right, uh, you're on all fours. We're gonna thread the needle. Right arm reaches through. Big extension here. And 
on that fifth one, thread it all the way through, bring your right shoulder to the ground, right ear to the ground, left arm walks out, big stretch across your upper back. Shoulders opening. Walk that left hand in, push back onto all fours. Left arm comes up, reaches through. Five, thread the needles. All the way through on that last one. Shoulder comes down to the mat, ear to the mat. Walk the right fingertips out. And breathe. Good, walk that right hand back in. Push back on all fours, a little cat cow here to loosen up that back. It did a lot of work today. Scoop out the tummy, let the head and neck relax. And then go ahead and bring the face forward, belly button comes down. Breathe in the way that feels right to you here. Do two more at your own pace. position. Take that right leg over the left. Pull the leg into the chest. Turn and look over the right shoulder. And even though that pendulum lunge wasn't really focused on your back, you had to use those muscles to keep that racked bell where you wanted it to be. So your back should feel like it was used today. Go ahead and switch sides. Bring that knee into the chest. Turn and look over the left shoulder. It's not unusual to notice that more than when we work the front side of our body because our day-to-day -day life we tend to be slumped over and the back side gets a little lazy. So we wake it up with these kind of workouts. Should feel alive right now. Good. Go ahead and bring it back to center. I'm going to have you come on down to your back. Take that right ankle to the left knee. Bring the left leg up. Reach behind. Grab the thigh. Pull that leg in. Head and neck, stay down and relaxed. You can extend the left leg for a little calf stretch. Release that stretch. Push the right leg all the way over the left, completely crossed. Go ahead and grab the shins, pull them in. Relax the head back down. Three big breaths here. Go ahead and unwind, put the feet flat on the floor again. Left ankle comes to the right knee, reach behind, grab the right thigh, pull that thigh in towards your chest, push against the left leg with the left elbow if you so choose. You can extend that right leg up for the calf stretch. Take a moment, own it, be here, be present. Take stock of how your body feels right now. Go ahead and release. You just did something real good for yourself, so own it. Bring those knees in. Go ahead and unwind. Go ahead and rock yourself back up into a seated position. Sit up nice and tall. You can take that left arm across the body. Bring that arm up and over. Let the hand fall between your shoulder blades. And release. Other side, bring the right arm across the body. Bring that arm up and over. Reach between your shoulder blades. Face stays forward. And release. Take a big old breath in. Palms to the ceiling, stretch it tall. Exhale, let it all go. One more time, big old breath in. Palms to the ceiling. Know you're leaving stronger than you showed up today for show. Sure. Go ahead and blow it out. Hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you back soon for some more fun. Have a good one.